afternoon and welcome to the Pinell Co County Community College District Governing Board meeting. In observance of the current Centers for Disease Control and Prevention guidelines and the Arizona, and Arizona Governor Doug Ducey's Executive Order 2020-52 regarding social distancing, this meeting is being held virtually. I'd like to acknowledge those from Central Arizona College in attendance. I am Dr. Dave Odiorn, Interim Vice Chair. Also with us today are Gladys Christensen, board member, Dr. Jackie Elliott, Central Arizona College President, Chris Wadka, Vice President of Business Affairs, Dr. Jenny Cardenas, Vice President of Student Services, Dr. Mary Kay Galland, Vice President of Academic Affairs, Brandy Bain, Vice President of Talent Development, Mary Lou Hernandez, Executive Assistant to the President and Governing Board, Jerry Walker, Board Elect, and Evelyn Kasuga, Board Elect. Our chair, Dan Miller, won't be joining us today uh, due to a family emergency. Uh, and if there is no objection, I'm going to change up the agenda a little bit. And before I officially call the meeting to order, I would like to swear in our two new members. That way we'll have a, uh, a quorum when we open the meeting. And uh, so we'll do it that way. Uh, the swearing in does not have to take place in the context of a meeting. So uh, we'll begin with that. Uh, Evelyn, I'll begin with you. If you would raise your right hand and repeat after me. And, uh, unmute yourself so that we can hear you. There we go. I, Evelyn Kasuga, do solemnly swear or affirm. I, Evelyn Kasuga, do solemnly swear or affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution and laws of the state of Arizona that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution and laws of the state of Arizona. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and defend them against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and defend them against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And that I will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of the office of member of the governing board of Central Arizona College and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of the office of mem as a member of the governing board of uh, Central Arizona College. According to the best of my ability, so help me God, or I do so with fun. According to the best of my ability, so help me God. Congratulations, Evelyn, and welcome to the board. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Interim Vice Chair. Appreciate it. Thank you all. Jerry, if you would unmute yourself. And raise your right hand, please. I, Jerry Walker, do solemnly swear or affirm. I, Jerry Walker, do solemnly swear or affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution and laws of the state of Arizona. That I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Arizona. That I will bear truth, true faith and the same and defend them against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and defend it against all enemies, both foreign and domestic. And that I will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of the office of member of the governing board of Central Arizona College and that I will faithfully discharge the duties as a member of the governing board of Central Arizona College. According to the best of my ability, so help According me God. According to the best of my ability, God, or so do I affirm. Uh, so do I affirm. Congratulations, Jerry, welcome to the board. Glad to have you. All right. Um, then I will call this uh, meeting of the board to order. And before we jump in, I want to make one other change to the agenda, if there is no objection. And that is um, the way the agenda reads, uh, we are to adjourn Sinidai uh, for the election of our new president. 
it seems to me that that is a bit awkward uh, as it takes us out of the meeting for the election. Uh, and if there is no objection, I, I will skip that adjournment and simply turn the, uh, the chairmanship over to uh, Dr. Elliott to conduct for the purpose of conducting the election. Uh, that means we're hearing no objection, I will do that. Uh, are there any other um, changes to the agenda? Gladys, did you want to make a change to the agenda? I think Gladys is frozen and I think she did want to make a change. Rob, can we unmute Gladys? I just asked her to unmute. I'm going to check her status. Give me a moment. Her video is frozen. We should plan some entertainment for uh, moments like these when the technology fails us. We could play music. We'll have IT play music for us. <laughs> well, I can guarantee you I'm not going to sing, so that might work. <laughs> I, would, I would sing, but everybody would hang up. I think Gladys's picture is moving. Yes, she's back. Uh, Gladys, you are muted. There we are. Gladys, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know where you lost us, but I am just at the point of asking if anyone had any uh, changes to suggest to the agenda. And uh, I believed you did. And yes, I. I come back. It's not too late to make the change <laughs> since I was lost somewhere in space. We, we um, waited for you. Go ahead and make your suggestion. Okay, I would like to uh, have a strike item number six on the agenda. That is the report of the governing board president. Um, is there any objection to that change? Then we will strike item number six. And uh, I, I suppose since you made the change, we've already stricken the ones about the board members being uh, inducted into, right? Was that we, that change was, was made arbitrarily, yes. but I didn't know if it needed a motion now or needed a suggestion at this point. No, because we did it outside of the actual meeting before I called the meeting to order. Okay, well, item six is the only one that I would like removed. Very good. Well, hearing Thank no you. objection, we will do that. And um, that brings us to the election of officers. And uh, Dr. Elliott, if you would assume the chair for that purpose, please. Thank you, Dr. Ordeon. Um, the next order of business to be conducted is the election of board officers. And at this time, we will entertain nominations for officers for the um, board of governors. And I open the floor to you, board members. Madam, Madam President, I would like to make uh, a nomination, a blanket nomination of all the elective officers. Uh, David Oredon, I don't say your name right, David. 
Anyway, as president and Evelyn Kasugas as vice president slash secretary and Jerry Walker as our representative to ACCCT, formerly known as AADGB. Second. Thank you, Madam Christensen. Are there other nominations? Hearing none, I will ask Mary Lou to do a roll call vote for yes. the slate of officers. Yes, and just to clarify, did Evelyn Kasuga second that motion? Oh, yes. Okay, thank you. All thank right, you, Evelyn. So, Sorry, I talked you. over you. Um, no. After that second, are there further discussions? Seeing none, now, Mary Lou, would you please do the roll call vote? Yes. Gladys Christensen? Yes. Dr. David Odiorn? Yes. Evelyn Kasuga? Yes. Jerry Walker? Jerry, please unmute yourself. Yes. Thank you. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Mary Lou. Congratulations, officers. And now I will turn the meeting over to Dr. Ordeo. Thank you, Dr. Elliott. And um, thank you all for the confidence in me shown by that vote. And I'm sure the, uh, the other newly elected officers feel likewise, and uh, we, we appreciate it. Um, that brings us to the consideration of the consent agenda. Uh, all of the following matters are part of the consent agenda and are to be approved by one motion. There will be no specific discussion of these items and any item may be removed from the consent agenda by any governing board member. Uh, are there any items that need to be removed? Uh, Dr. Dr. Or, or Mr. President. Try, try Dave, Jerry, it works easier. Dave. Okay, Dave, Mr. or Dave or Mr. President as of now. Uh, I don't know what the consent agenda consists of, so I don't know how to respond to the question. Okay. Um, it, um, the consent agenda, of course, is, is fairly routine and don't normally require discussion, but I'll just read through for them, for you, what's on it. And uh, if there's anything there you'd like to know more about, we can remove it. Um, would require that I actually have the list in front of me. It is actually on the screen. Oh, there um, it is. Yes, it is. Thank you. Uh, so it's the approval of the minutes from November 17th. It's the personnel report, the academic calendar, and the adoption of the Title IX policy, uh, which has uh, had two previous readings before the board. And that's all there is to it then, okay. That's all there is on the consent agenda. Then I have no objection to it. Anyone else? Then I would entertain a motion to accept the consent agenda. So may So move, second. Second, Mr. Walker. Uh, no, motion by Mr. Walker, second uh, Evelyn. By Evelyn. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Oh, do we need it? Yeah, we need a roll call on this, don't we? Mary Lou, oh. would you? Yes, of course. Gladys Christensen? Yes. Dr. David Odiorn? Yes. Evelyn Kasuga? Yes. Jerry Walker? Yes. Motion approved, passes unanimously. Thank you, Mary Lou. Item five on the agenda is an information item, uh, policies for first reading. Uh, Brandy, uh, would you take that for us? Yes, thank you. Good afternoon and congratulations, Governing Board President, Dr. Ordeon. Um, welcome Hi. Governing Board members, President Elliott, Mary Lou, colleagues, and any guests that we have present today. Um, this afternoon, I present to you the first reading of the following policies. We do have two. The first one is our employee relations policy. This is a new policy. Um, and the second one is board operations. And this is a revision to an existing policy that came out of the um, work session in December 
um, I believe those changes were uh, suggested during that time. So again, it's only first reading. It's only for governing board's review. You do have a copy of the policies in your packet. I'd be happy to entertain any questions that you may have. Thank you. Dave, I think you're muted. Yes, I was. <laughs> Are there any questions? Thank you, Brandy. Thank you. And next it's item is. Next slide, Michael. I have a feedback here, I guess. Next item is uh, the report from the president, Dr. Elliott. Thank you, President Ordeon. Um, it's my pleasure to provide you an update on a few things. As you know, we are still operating virtually. Um, students have returned to learning. Um, and uh, we're very fortunate that faculty and staff are getting much more astute at virtual learning for our students. We do plan to bring our CTE students, those students needing experiential hands-on experiences to campus in a couple of weeks where we can do that safely. We do have um, many students living in the residence halls that are athletes. We only brought back athletes and allowed them to live in the residence halls. We're doing continuous testing, enhanced protocols so that they can practice safely and hopefully be able to have a competition here or two later in the spring. Uh, so far, uh, we've been able to do that safely for the last week and a half. So i uh, really proud of the residential life staff, the coaches all following very strict protocols to keep our students uh, safe and healthy and engaged in their athletic programs. Uh, I also wanna share with you, you may recall last year we were selected to participate in the Caring Campus Initiative that is funded by the Institute for Evidence-Based Change. We recently received notice that we've been selected to participate in the faculty version of uh, the Caring Campus. And this, will, uh, this project will enable our faculty to identify the core classroom behaviors by looking at data, faculty who are very successful, with student completion and student retention and find out what are, what are they doing and then have those practices and behaviors adopted um, through peer coaching that faculty can provide um, one another. So, uh, and it will be wonderful professional development for our faculty through the peer coaching um, model. Um, so uh, I also wanna note that the Regional Workforce Training Center is completed. I was there last week uh, there's a few things that are still being installed, but training will begin later this month for business and industry using safety, COVID safety protocols. But we're very excited that we're going to be able to help grow the workforce of Pinal County through this beautiful facility. And I also want to share that we have received notification of the CARES 2 round of funding that will be coming to the college. I think it's um, uh, $1.5 million for the students and then um, another portion, and Chris may know this better, that we'll be able to use to offset operation or costs related to the pandemic, such as overtime for our police department and facilities. And so we're really fortunate that we were able to receive that second round of funding. We had to apply for that first round that we received, if you recall, I think it was in, in April or May, because we were recipients uh, at that time and applied, we didn't have to apply this time. So um, again, we'll be looking at coming together. Um, how do we help our students uh, be able to continue their learning and whether it's our technology needs and then use those funds to offset some operational costs. So uh, happy things to, to, um, to share with you and I'm happy to answer any questions you might have about those items. Are there any questions for Dr. Elliott from the board? Hello? Mr. Chair. Yes, I actually not those specific items, but I was pleased, Dr. Elliott, to see in an op-ed piece about a week or so ago between yourself and uh, Lee Lambert from Pima Community College and uh, 
and uh, Steve Stephen Gonzalez at Maricopa Community College District talking about the value of community college education and I'm assuming that was the pitch to the state legislature and the governor as well. So just wondered if that was going to be something you might want to just touch on a little bit. Because that Thank was that you was a for great reminding message. me. Boy, it, that seems so long ago. I think we wrote it before the break, um, before the, the holiday break. So it kind of sat there for a while. But again, really just having trying to share the message that that there is value to a community college degree. And we are going to be key. And when I say we, I mean community colleges and reskilling America's workforce post pandemic. And I think that we just wanted to really get a positive message out there that we're here. This is what, what our role is and that um, we're, we play a, an important role in the reskilling of America. And I think that's one thing that all politicians are talking about right now is the mm. reskilling and the recovery and uh, we wanted to make sure that Arizona knew that the community colleges are, are cru crucial to that role. Um, you know, and if funding comes with it, that would be nice. <laughs> For us, our biggest challenge, as you're aware, is the expenditure limitation um, challenge that, that we really um, hope that the legislature will address this year. If anyone missed that article, it showed up again today in the uh, independent newspapers. Uh, so it's out there. Uh, Jerry? Yes. Um, for some strange reason, uh, the mayor and city manager of Apache Junction have taken a lacking to calling me and talking to me about community colleges. And uh, the topic that came up most frequently with them was uh, workforce certifications and uh, uh, apprenticeships and I'd like to know how we're dealing with those is that part of what you were talking about in your brief yes um and yes it's linked um and if you call maybe recall when we did our orientation um I think earlier this month um Mr. Walker is we went over the strategic plan the college's strategic plan and apprenticeships is a key component of the strategic plan and growing our apprenticeship programs. But yes, that feeds into workforce development. And we're looking at a lot of different components where not only certificate degree programs, but short-term programs, apprenticeships, um, and also non-credit opportunities for workforce development. And I think it's really important that we be incredibly flexible and agile because of what we've seen with the pandemic. But we do have an apprenticeship program with Wilson Electric, actually at, at the Apache Junction campus and I know that the mayor and the city manager have been very instrumental in working with the college in developing those partnerships. Okay, uh, would it be uh, appropriate for me to ask to be able to visit with the director of workforce development on a one-on-one -on -one basis? Well, I would say that it would probably be best appropriate for me to share whatever information you might want to know because we want to be really careful about um, accreditation and yes. the, um, the lines crossing as far as board being a policy board and being in the day to day. And in fact, our director of workforce development is leaving at the end of January um, is taking another opportunity. So soon we won't have anybody in that role until we hire someone new. But I would be happy to, um, you know, address any questions or concerns you might have, and try to keep that channel of communications um, between uh, keeping the board out of the day to day, just to keep us from any accreditation concerns. I don't know, uh, President Ordion, you might have a different thought or concern about that. No, I think that's right, Jackie. Um, we do, I think, have to be very careful to make sure that our communication goes through you uh, to. Uh, the rest of your team, and uh, and perhaps that's something for you to keep in mind in, in future reports. Uh, know that that is a, an item of interest to the board, and uh, as appropriate, uh, you might report on it going forward. But I think that's probably the best approach. Okay. Any other Sorry, questions, Dr. Elliott? Then I think uh, up next is Mr. Wadka with our business affairs reports. Thank you and good afternoon and congratulations, Mr. President, and welcome to the board, Ms. Evelyn and Mr. Walker. Um, a lot of new faces today. 
So congratulations once again, and welcome to your first board meeting. Uh, just to piggyback on what the president mentioned in terms of the CARES dollars, and this is fresh information we just received within the last 24 hours, the additional funding for student aid is approximately 1.5 million, which is an, uh, in an additional 1.5 to what we received about seven months ago. And in terms of the institutional support portion, I just opened that up two hours ago and I sent it out to the vice presidents and the president. I'm not sure if you folks had a chance to open it up, but that is an astounding 4.4 million additional dollars that we will be able to, uh, from the feds, to spend on COVID related expenses, et cetera. So that is very good news as we, that is significantly higher than the first batch that we received back in uh, April, May timeframe. So I'm just uh, going through that information. So we'll be able to share more of that as I, I read up on it, but that it is a grand total, of, I should say an additional $4.4 million to the college. So for today, we have two informational reports one is the monthly budget and the second one are the awarded bids over 20,000. Starting with the uh, monthly budget report in your packets, you will see a November to November comparison. November 2020 shows the district's operating fund expenditures are at about 35.6% of the budget, which is a slight increase of about 3.7% compared to November 19 which was at about 32%. Some of the issues, uh, when we look at November to November, I'll just read through a couple of highlights. As I mentioned at the December retreat, if you recall, we are having a reduction of tuition and fees. That is obvious from the loss of revenue in the loss of enrollment. So if you compare last year to where we were in November to this year, you'll see a decrease there. The current year state appropriations are lower because the 2019 figures include the one-time allocation. If you recall, last year we received uh, some additional funds from the state appropriation. This year we do not. Um, other revenue is, is slightly higher this year. That's due to the change in our insurance companies, the Blue Cross Blue Shield. Um, we had a uh, carry forward of approximately $475,000, and that is being carried as, actually I should say refunded back to us, that is being carried as other revenue this year compared to November a year ago. And in the auxiliary portions, you'll see that there's a decrease in the auxiliary revenue, um, and that is significantly due to dorm revenues. We had zero dorm revenues for the fall term, and as you know, we only have limited access to the dorms, mainly for the athletes this spring term. And there's a decrease also in the auxiliary uh, expenditures. And the main reason for that is for this year, our new budgeting is that we did move the EMS program and the fire science program to the general operating fund from auxiliary. So that is the difference that is, exists there. Uh, those are the main highlights for the budgets. Happy to answer any question on the budget report. Any questions, Mr. Watka? Jerry, go ahead. Yes, uh, Mr. President, uh, Chris, I just uh, uh, was curious about whenever you talked about coronavirus related issues, I suppose that even this program that you're doing right now with online discussions is covered under that concept, isn't it? Yeah, yes, sir, it is. And really, um, there are three pockets of dollars for what's called the CARES dollars from the feds. CARES 1 is for students, student aid. CARES 2 is for the institution. And CARES 3, there was a portion of dollars allocated that did help a lot with the online learning and a transferring of expenditures from face-to-face -face over to uh, the online format. But not to say that some of this 4.4 million that's additional could not be used for that as well, because it can, and I'm sure we're going to have meetings here in the near future, how to discuss the distribution of that 4.4 million, since that is a uh, deadline by the feds 
uh, currently from what I'm reading is to have that fully expended by the end of May. It doesn't give us a lot of time. Any other questions for Mr. Walker? No, none for me. Okay, thank you. Then the second item are the awarded purchases that are 20,000 and over for the uh, month of January, <clears throat> excuse me. The first one is temporary help, account temps out of Los Angeles, California, 22,000. That is to create an open purchase order for any temporary employees that, that may be needed for fiscal year 21. The second one is EMP Consulting Services, Henry and Horn, Tempe, Arizona, 50,000. That is to contract for consulting services for the ERP. Next one is a Signal Peak Campus Video Wall Project. That is an I-100. Uh, Exhibit One Corporation, Phoenix, Arizona, 88,829.36. And that is to purchase equipment to create a video wall that is going into building I, room 100 on the Signal Peak Campus. Next one is it's uh, Superstition Mountain Campus Science Lab Stools, Atmosphere Commercial Interiors, Minneapolis, Minnesota, in the amount of 36,052.33. And that is to purchase lab stools for the science labs at SMC. And these are with funds from the state aid. Next one, Interpreting Services, Access Professional Interpreting, LLC, Tempe, Arizona, 45,000. That is to purchase additional interpreting services for the district for this fiscal year. Fitness center equipment, BSN Sports Dallas, Texas, 29,142.20. That is to purchase additional equipment for the fitness center at Signal Peak Campus, specifically racks and benches for the fitness center. Esports computers and monitors, Dell Computers, Chicago, Illinois, 47,575. That is to purchase computers and monitors for the eSports program that was recently started that is both at Signal Peak Campus and also the Maricopa Campus. Compressors for SPC, Comfort Systems USA, Chandler, Arizona, 37,839.19. That is to re, uh, purchase three replacement temp temporary unit, temperature unit compressors at the Signal Peak Campus. And the last one is ADQ, APP Permit Modification Application, Waterworks Engineers LLC from Scottsdale, Arizona, 25,000. And that is to modify our application for our facility as requested by ADEQ. Happy to answer any questions on these purchases. Any questions for Mr. Watt on the purchases? I don't have any questions on the purchases. I'd just like to get more familiar with what's going on on each of the campuses so that I can understand what the purchases are for because uh, we do have you know, the fiduciary responsibility of dealing with the finances and tax dollars. Yes, sir. That, that Chris, is there anything uh, there that that isn't routine operations that stands out uh, that that might be of interest? Uh, well, the the video wall project is something new. Um, fitness equipment. I mean, that is sporadic replacement equipment that we have. Uh, pretty much, this has been was a light month, so there weren't a lot of expenditures that were over the threshold of the twenty thousand dollars. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jerry, we, we exercise our fiduciary responsibility typically through the approval of the budget uh, and, and monitoring uh, that we're uh, staying in line with the approved budget. But as far as specific um, expenditures, that's another one of those things that we pretty much stay away from. Certainly, if there's something that's extraordinary, uh, I think it's useful for us to hear about it. But beyond that, uh, it's really the the, uh, the prerogative of administration to deal with those issues. I, I fully understand that and, and uh, don't have a problem with it, except uh, board members at another community college that I was a member of the board for once got burned because there was some uh, money being spent that shouldn't have been. 
and we there ended up with some terminations from some of the college presidents. Of course, Maricopa Community Colleges has ten colleges, and and uh, only one college for Central Arizona, but with several campuses. And uh, we ended up with several presidents being terminated for cause. And, and we could have saved them an awful lot of heartache if we just known what they were doing and could have guided them away from making those bad mistakes that they made. And I'm sure they were conscientious people who cared a great deal about how the money was being spent, but they just lost track of it in their day-to-day -day affairs. Yeah, that's that's certainly a, a cautionary story, and and I think it's it's a good reason why we all need to read these budget reports carefully and and certainly ask questions if we don't understand what's in there. But uh, they are pretty thorough, and and uh, from month to month, I think we do get a good picture of of where the money's going and why. And certainly, if there's something that's not clear, we certainly can ask about those things as they come along. Now, are those reports um, emailed to us or are they uh, snail mailed to us? Do we have a hard copy available uh, of those so we can go over them line item by line item and discuss them with the, the originator of the requests? Yes, uh, I, I take it you didn't get a, uh, a packet this month. Uh, you I normally not. would. That may have been a missed because your first I wasn't yet sworn in. Uh, but you will get an emailed packet from Mary Lou, and uh, they're also available on the uh, Teams site, which I think you were introduced to uh, during the orientation. Uh, so they're there, and yes, it is uh, certainly advisable to go through them line by line before the meeting so that if, if there's anything that uh, needs to be further investigated, you can talk about it uh, at the time of the report. And Mary Lou, uh, would you please, I know we're late with it, but would you please make sure that uh, Jerry gets a copy of that so that he has it, uh, even though it is late. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Jerry, if it's okay, I'll call you right after this meeting and we'll go over how to uh, uh, retrieve those documents. Okay. Good. Chris? Well, that concludes my report. Thank you. All right, and that brings us to our monitoring report, uh, Dr. Cardenas and Dr. Galat. Good afternoon. I will be starting uh, the monitoring report and I'm sharing it with Dr. Cardenas this afternoon, uh, as many of our areas actually do overlap both academics and student services. Um, so good afternoon, uh, board president, uh, Dr. Odiarn, uh, Dr. Elliott, members of the board, uh, colleagues and guests. Uh, the governing or the um, the monitoring report today um, is really focused on community uh, community enrichment, and so the first two graphs have to do with our community education courses, which encompass actually a pretty wide range of things. It's, it's straightforward um, personal enrichment. There is some. Um, uh, although workforce uh, development, the, we have a director of workforce who lives in the skilled trades area. Uh, we do do some um, workforce trainings uh, through this area. We do um, quite a bit of um, lifelong learning and um, some other, there's some other buckets that all fall under community education. Um, in a nutshell, uh, when you look at the graphs, um, unfortunately, our um, enrollments in the community education, uh, excuse me, community education courses um, have been pretty steadily declining. Um, the narrative explains a little bit what happened. And um, in, in short, we did take a break. Uh, we had some staffing changes. We took a break to kind of reassess where we were going with community education. Um, but then for a variety of reasons, we just did not uh, pick up those numbers. Um, and so uh, we are looking to find some more creative ways to improve that. Now, um, I will say that the, um, the graph stops with our 2019-20 year because we do report on full years. But I was speaking with or uh, working with the dean of, of this area. And um, they have actually, uh, it looks like we are getting some strong improvements, um, which is surprising during this time under COVID. Uh, we did initially have quite a decline at the end in the spring of 2020 when everybody went virtual. Um, and um, because this group had been 
first trying to recover from staffing and reorganization changes, then from bringing on board a new payments or a new uh, registration system, which took us a longer time to implement than we had expected. Um, they realized that they had to really do some radically different sorts of things. And um, so it looks like uh, from what they've reported to me, um, our enrollment from July or from July 1st of 2020 through January of 2020 is actually um, at 980, which would be a huge jump. Um, but this is because they're doing a lot more short term modules. Um, they have they have embraced the virtual platform, which we did not imagine would be as popular with the lifelong learning group, uh, because they really, we hear a lot from the folks who come and take ceramics classes and do, you know, many of the face-to-face, the -face, um, hands-on kinds of things. Um, but we've actually done quite well with our virtual presentations um, of uh, course materials during this period of time. Uh, and the group has just shared with me a flyer is, is about to is coming out. Um, they're going to do a short um, sampler of the courses that they have uh, for this first half of the spring semester 21. Uh, and um, the sampler is for free. So people are able to take a one hour sampler of up to five courses. Uh, and um, if they engage in the sampler and want to sign up for the courses, then they're able to get a discount for signing up for those courses. So it looks like a nice marketing uh, program. The courses are not long term. Um, they're, you know, a num I think most of them are about five meetings. Uh, and um, but there are areas that they, they did a lot of surveying and they were really working, working to try to, to improve again what they were offering. And um, so yoga is one of them. There's a wellness module. Um, there's some software uh, learning opportunities. There's conversational Spanish, which there's been a strong interest in. Um, so, uh, you know, we, we, we're really looking forward to see what happens with this. So if, if that is where we're headed, um, I'm not displeased with those numbers because we still have another semester to go before we're done with this particular year. Um, they also do hope to bring back some face-to-face -face offerings starting in March, and they're planning for that. So, um, so again, lots of effort being put into this. Um, we've had some unfortunate trends, and um, we are looking to turn those around. And, and I believe we are on the right track at this point in time. Um, so if we go to the next slide, um, great. Um, the second measure that we had with community education is in the number of classes. Um, that are being offered, uh, the number of learning opportunities. And um, as a part of the strategic planning and, and feedback from the board for the monitoring report, um, it was strongly recommended that we go for uh, quality of offerings, not just quantity. Um, we did have a, a pretty significant drop in enrollments back when uh, in 2016-17, again, when we had a change in staffing. Um, it sort of picked up as we moved into um, shifting some credit courses over to the non-credit areas, things that really seem more like, <clears throat> excuse me, personal enrichment rather than, you know, true credit courses such as yoga. Um, and, but then again, we, we had a decline as we, uh, again, we're trying to um, revisit our registration system. And then as um, the pandemic hit uh, in 2020 in, this, in the second half of that uh, period of time. Um, so again, uh, I have a report that says this year we are picking things up again and up through uh, uh, January, we have offered 142 different courses. So that's getting us up closer to that number. Um, of, that, of that offering, no, only 98 of them did run. So a lot were offered, not everybody, not all of them filled. Um, but uh, again, that group is using that information to try to make some um, important changes. So I will stop there with that and leave. Um, there will be opportunities for questions. I just want to summarize with the recent and, and um, planned improvements that some of the most important things uh, that have occurred that seems to have had some um, real progress in the right direction are moving some credit offerings to the non-credit or community um, education lifelong learning. And we are continuing to do that as we are assessing our um, credit offerings, uh, realizing some of them, for example, the Microsoft Suite, uh, which was an important part of uh, the uh, business offerings for a long time. It, it is not something that we really have a need for in the programs anymore, but we still have a need for that out in the community. So we're going to be shifting some additional things such as that uh, over to the community education. Um, 
we did uh, recently pilot um, a membership program for um, popular offerings such as ceramics. That was taking off beautifully. Uh, but again, with the pandemic, we had to put a hold on that. Uh, for the meantime, we have still done some ceramics online and then people have brought things in to be fired uh, through this sort of elaborate exchange uh, at a drop off point. Uh, so we were able to keep some ceramics going, but we're really hopeful that that will pick up again. And there are a number of things like that that we really look forward to seeing take off again in a face to face format. Um, and um, as far as the uh, planned improvements, um, the uh, uh, dean and the uh, um, coordinator of that area have been doing a lot of outreach to local partners uh, during this time to assess their training needs and things that might help them in terms of lifelong learning that would, you know, maybe even uh, be good for post-employment opportunities. Um, and we are looking at developing more continuing education. So, so those are some things that are in the works for planning. Um, so I will stop now and turn this over to Dr. Cardenas and I'll be available for questions later on. Well, hello everyone. I have the next two uh, sections for us to take a look at. So again, these are specifically related to our community events and cultural events that, that happen in the community, which oftentimes involve our students, both as participants in putting on the performances, but also in, in participating in, in viewing them. Um, so our goal for this year was to have 100 events. I think we would have been well on our way to exceed that um, had we not um, been in the pandemic and kind of seen where, where things have gone um, with that. We have been able to move, um, as many of you know, the majority of our cultural events had taken place in previous years at the Signal Peak campus and primarily through our Penn Center. Um, many large scale events uh, had been held there. What we've done over the last couple of years and have seen a great increase in the number of events that we've had is really stretch that out to have many of these same events, not only held at, at, in the Penn Center, but also at surrounding campuses at our Signal Peak, or I'm sorry, our uh, Superstition Mountain Campus, Maricopa, Santan, they've all had different events that have brought community members onto campus um, and shared cultural in cultural events and um, educational opportunities. So um, we are confident that as we move out of the pandemic and are able to really shift the way that we're providing services and, and providing uh, community information uh, that we will be able to reach that goal next year. Um, we again, we're well on our way into the semester and, and have had to cancel many of the events um, that, that had been planned. Um, the second component or the next slide is really talking about the community satisfaction with their partnerships with CAC. So this is something that we've looked at for quite some time. Um, we've really done a lot of work. I know um, Dr. Gill and her team and, and Chris working with uh, Brooke and community services or uh, community events have really done a great job at determining who our, our partner contacts are and ensuring that our contact list is kept up to date, that after every event, we're reaching out to those contact uh, members and determining how satisfied they were with the partnership that we had held or the event that we had held and really getting feedback from them um, on a regular basis. So we send out a survey to all of our partners and ask them um, a list of questions about their partnership and how we're meeting their needs. And as you see um, on this list, we last year were at 84%. We've now moved up to 86% with a goal of reaching a 90%. And Again, uh, you know, there were many things that we weren't able to do this year, many transition, many things that transitioned a little bit differently um, than they had in the past, but we still really have a great uh, relationship with our partners and continue to develop new partnerships every year. So um, keeping up with this list and making sure that we're gathering information is very important. Um, we do have dedicated staff now to community events, um, whereas before it was a shared position. So in the last couple of years, we do have a dedicated person who is able to help us with uh, planning events, really taking a look at tracking events and ensuring that we don't have a duplication of services. Um, oftentimes in the past, we would see that there might be a community event that's held on a certain topic, and then also a student engagement event that's held on, a, on the same topic. And now they're partnering much more, uh, working together to really be um, aware of not duplicating those services. Um, and the dedicated position has also, she's been able to really take a look at the fees for external rentals and update the fees, um, update the rental process and kind of what that looks like. So it's it's just been moving in the right direction and then all of a sudden we can't have events on campus. So we're, we're ready to, as soon as we can get back, um, the structure is, is certainly in place. Um, with planned improvements, we really will continue with the partnership that we had started. I think the pandemic kind of hit it right in the, in the, the heart of uh, kind of implementing all of the new things that were in place. Um, we're again, constantly looking for additional partnerships and wanting to um, work with the external entities to provide 
uh, cultural events and, and educational opportunities for the community. So, and we're happy to take any questions that you might have. Thank you. Any questions regarding the monitoring reports? Seeing none. Well, Evelyn, Mr. yes. Chair. Yeah, it's actually not a question, but um, despite the understandable decline in the other three or four graphs, it's good to see that the, the community perception and satisfaction go up. So I think that speaks volumes in terms of that, that interrelationship with, with all of our communities. So obviously it's, it's getting strengthened, even though we've had some you know, stumbles not due to nothing that, that was in our control in, in a lot of ways. So congratulations, because that, that, that's a hard one, is that customer sat. So good job. Thank you. All right, that concludes our agenda. Our next governing board meeting is scheduled for February 23rd, 2021. I'd like to thank everyone for attending our virtual meeting. And I believe with that, we can end our broadcast.